Well, hello, friends, and happy Labor Day. We want to thank you for taking the time on this Labor Day weekend to join us for the online worship experience of the Morning Star Methodist Church. We're going to have communion today as a community of faith, and I sure am glad you're here. Before we get into our worship time, I want to remind you about a few things. First of all, if you're going to be a part of our, our live worship experience this weekend, we're only going to have one live worship experience at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. That's September the 1st. On September the 8th, we're starting a brand new series entitled Questions. Questions we're afraid to ask. So we're going to dig in God's Word and talk about some things that maybe folks don't want to talk about in public. But we're going to learn about God's Word and we're going to learn about some of these answers to these questions we're afraid to ask. And then that evening at 4.30, we're going to have the Back to School Splash. Uh, we're going to have barbecue. That stuff's going to be cooking all day long, getting ready for our time together. There'll be water slides, there'll be candy, there'll be all kinds of games. We just hope that you'll be able to join us there from 4.30 uh, until we're done playing or until we've just partied and pooped out. I hope that you'll be able to join us for that back to school splash. Well, friends, let's get ready to get into God's word today together. And also, let's celebrate around the Lord's table together. I'm glad you're here. Please join me for our opening prayer. O oh, Redeemer God, as we gather for worship on this communion Sunday, we ask that you send your Holy Spirit to fall afresh on us. Our hearts long to be close to you, O oh God, may our lives and our deeds honor you. We pray for your Holy Spirit to waken new hope in us. Grant us the vision to see the coming of your kingdom. Help us to celebrate the glimpses of grace that you have given to each of us. Knit our hearts together in worship and communions so that we know we do not struggle alone in working for your peace, holiness, and justice. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray.
throne I stand in Him complete Jesus died my soul to save My lips shall still Today I am reading from the New Testament book of 1 John, chapter 3, verse 1 through verse 3. I will be reading today's scripture from the New American Standard Bible Translation of the Holy Bible. 1 John 3, 1 through 3. See how great a love the Father has given us, that we would be called children of God, and in fact we are. For this reason the world does not know us, because it did not know Him. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not appeared as yet what we will be. We know that when He appears we will be like Him, because we will see Him just as He is. And everyone who has this hope set on Him purifies himself, just as He is pure. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Hey there, guys. We're coming from the great outdoors. What a wonderful place. You know, this is one of my most favorite places on campus to worship. I love to be outside. I love to be down here at the prayer chapel. So excited to be here with you today. Today we're talking about um, gifts. So I want to ask you, when is, what's the last gift you've ever received? Was it your Christmas gift? Was it um, a birthday gift? Was it just a gift to say, hey, or I love you? Well, today I want to read part of the scripture that you're going to hear in just a second, but I want to go ahead and read this portion to you. It says, uh, James, it's chapter 1, verses 16 through 18, and it says, Don't be misled, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good gift, every perfect gift comes from above. I have to tell you, when I was pregnant with both Pierce and Katie, I would get several, several, several things, blankets, uh, bibs, um, all kinds of decorative things for them that said this verse, and it always makes me think of Pierce and Katie when I hear that. Um, These gifts come down from the Father, the creator of the heavenly lights, in whose character there is no change at all. He chose to give us birth by His true word, and here is the result. We are like the first crop from the harvest of everything He created. How cool is that? The first crop, the first one, the most exciting one, the most exciting gift. So what I want to ask you today is, what do you see as a gift? Is it something that's physically given to you? Or can it be the presence of someone in your life? 
I have lots of gifts and blessings that I can think of each and every day. So I want us to change that word gift into blessings. What are the blessings you receive each and every day that God gives you that are good and perfect in every single way? Is it a simple smile that someone gives you when you're feeling down? Is it a simple friend at school that comes and sits beside you when you're upset or struggling with something? Those are wonderful, good, and perfect gifts that God gives us each and every day. Our days are filled with these wonderful gifts. All we have to do is acknowledge them and find them. So this week, this upcoming week, what I challenge you to do is find those people, find those things in your daily lives that are good and perfect gifts that are given to you from God each and every day. It can be somebody or something or just a moment that you have with God, but find those. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna count to three and we're gonna say the Lord's Prayer. Are you ready? One, two, three. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Have a great week. Well, friends, thanks for being with us today. We're going to be talking about the gift of divine love, and then we're going to be experiencing communion together as a community of faith. I have a funny story to share with you. It happens to do with the recording artist named Dolly Parton. She's been in movies and done books, and she has been such a patron saint of uh, the Smoky Mountain area, especially with her reading initiative that she does there and, and it's gone nationwide with. But back in the late 70s, uh, she tells this story about how there was a Dolly Parton lookalike contest that was going on. And just for fun, she thought she would show up and enter that contest. And so she entered the contest and was a part of it. And can you believe this? When they read off the judge's selection of who looked the most like Dolly Parton, Dolly Parton came in second at the lookalike contest for Dolly Parton. And you can imagine how embarrassed the judges were and, and all the contestants when they realized that she was actually Do Dolly Parton and that she didn't even win a lookalike contest for her. And so one of the reporters afterwards asked her, said, well, how did it feel to be in a contest for the Dolly Parton lookalike contest and then to come in second? And she said, well, I never knew rejection until I was rejected for being me. Uh, friends, all of us at some point in our life, we have felt some type of rejection. Many people in today's world experience that pain that comes with feeling rejected. And often it's kind of an invisible burden that is born without others being fully aware of the fact that the person feels rejected. 
I remember when I first started ministry a few decades ago, a dear friend of mine was having some personal challenges and in feeling intense pain from being rejected. It's a very sad story, but it may be more common than you may think. His mother wanted a daughter rather than a son and told him this often beginning when he was about nine years old. And that constant reminder of her rejection of him as a son devastated his sense of self-worth and it caused him to live in a world of mental negativity. He struggled with severe depression and that impacted his health, his marriage and his overall total well-being. He was a long distance runner and in great shape, yet he died at the age of 40 of a massive heart attack. I've often thought that he may have died resulting from a broken heart of being rejected by his mother. Many students experience a feeling of rejection because maybe of their inability to excel in the classroom or to excel on the athletic field. And because of that feeling, they, they feel rejected by their peers or by their teachers, by their coaches, or maybe by even their parents. Over the past few weeks, I've witnessed the drama of many friends whose daughters were rejected by the college sororities and their top selections list after they spent thousands of dollars on outfits and accessories for the interviews and all things connected to the rush experience. These young ladies, they, they spiral into dark places sometimes because they were rejected by a group that would supposedly enhance their college life and place them on a path for success in the workplace one day. Why do we do that to our children? Great numbers of people labor each day at their jobs with a feeling of rejection because they have not been able to enter the occupation of their first choice or they are not where they wanted to be on their ideal career path. There may even be someone worshiping with us online or here in this worship space today who may feel rejected by a community of faith or even this community of faith. You see, friends, the feeling of rejection, it's very real. We may feel rejected when we dwell on our past failures. We must avoid putting ourselves down, friends, because we fail to achieve what we think is our highest potential. God sees great value in us. We may feel rejected when we compare ourselves with others. And we must be on guard lest we compare ourselves unfavorably with others who have achieved what we feel may be greater success than ours and may have more material possessions than we do. We've got to be careful about that because that's an exercise of self-destructiveness. You see, the reality is our spiritual enemy tries to depress us. Friends, make no mistake about it. Satan is an accuser. Satan is our enemy. And Satan can lead us to what I call stinking thinking, to where we're not thinking about the purpose that God has created us for. Jesus even describes Satan as a liar. And part of Satan's strategy is to remind us of all of our failures, all of our mistakes, all of our weaknesses, and what we may feel are inadequacies in our own lives. Satan has a goal of getting us to believe that maybe even God has rejected us. Satan wants to persuade us to believe what others would reject us for even before we begin doing what we should do. Have you ever suffered from the pain of being rejected? Uh, maybe you felt lonely or isolated or even unloved. If so, it is important for us to be reminded that even Jesus experienced rejection in his life as well. John 1 says, he was in the world and the world came into being through him. And yet the world did not know him. He came to his own and his own people did not accept him. Did you know that Jesus was rejected by the people of his hometown of Nazareth? There were several moments in the synagogue there in Nazareth where they were unwilling to accept his teachings. They even tried to throw him off the side of a cliff one time. They did not want correction or guidance from one who had grown up in little old Nazareth. Well, because of that experience, friends, Jesus knows how to reveal and to affirm God's love and God's acceptance of us because of Jesus. And perhaps this was one of his primary motives in instituting what we call the Lord's Supper. 
Now the observance of the Passover feast and their custom, that's an annual event and it's done to remind the Jewish people of God's love and redemptive purpose and of God's power to deliver them from the tyranny of Egypt when they were there in bondage. But on the observance of this particular meal in the first century, Jesus gave it an entirely different meaning for all of his followers. Paul describes it well in his letter to the first century church in Corinth when he says, For I received from the Lord that which I have also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way he also took the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. To me, it's rather astonishing that when I try to understand how the Lord could have a sense of gratitude on the night before he was about to endure such intense pain through the beating and through his crucifixion. He gave thanks when breaking the bread. Notice that. Also notice that he gave thanks when sharing the cup. He even gave thanks to his father that night in the Garden of Gethsemane when he was praying. Even when he was asking his father if there was another way he could avoid what was about to happen. Jesus was about to grant us, friends, the ultimate gift. A gift of unconditional love. And Jesus taught us, friends, that there was more to be obtained in a life of giving than there was to be found in a life of getting. Acts chapter 20 tells us, In everything I showed you that by working hard in this way, you must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he himself said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. Friends, Jesus not only taught this truth, but he experienced it. He was giving his all to the good of God the Father for the good of others, for us, for you, and for me. Friends, God's gift to us is indescribable in the love that thought it. No one can adequately describe God's love for a needy race like humankind. God did not hastily conceive this plan. Friends, it was in place from the beginning since God's covenant with Abraham back in Genesis when God told Abraham that he would never be able to honor the debt of that covenant. There was a cross in God's heart long before there was ever a cross on that hill that we know as Calvary. And the great salvation of humankind, it was a thought in the heart of God from before the foundation of the world. You see, God's gift to us is indescribable in the love that brought it. Jesus Christ, friends, came into this world to be the love of God for all of us. He took upon himself the garments of our humanity, human flesh. And as a human being, he experienced hunger, he experienced rejection, he experienced weariness, and found himself in need of nourishment, in need of sleep, just like we do. He would feel the loss and betrayal of a friend. He would hurt like we hurt, and he would bleed like we bleed. And friends, the love of Christ, it was so great. And his love for us was so true that he was willing to go to the cross to register that love and demonstrate that for us. There is no way for a human to adequately describe the love that brought salvation to us, all because of Jesus Christ. So let us recognize that today, that apart from his sacrificial death, friends, we would have no hope for the forgiveness of our sins. And may we be able to say, like Paul said to the in church in Corinth in the second letter, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread, saying, This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way he took the cup and said, This is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink of it in remembrance of me. Today, 
we remember his sacrifice. The Lamb of God who died for the sins of the world. We examine our hearts, confess our sins and humble ourselves before our Creator. We proclaim Christ's death until he comes again. The good news that Christ has overcome the grave and given us hope for eternal life with him. The body and the blood, such precious gifts given for us. We remember, we proclaim, we eat and we drink and our souls are satisfied. This is our story. This is the gospel. This is communion. Well, hello, friends. We're at a time now to where we're going to do something very special together. We're going to get to celebrate the Lord's Supper together. Now, one of the things that makes Morning Star Methodist maybe a little different from some faith traditions that you've experienced in the past is that we are Wesley into the core. And like John Wesley, we believe in an open table. And the reason we believe that is because the night of the first Last Supper, when Jesus shared with his followers, he served Judas, the one who would betray him. He served Peter, the one who would deny him. And then he also served all the others that would end up running away and leaving him there in the garden by himself with the Roman legion and the temple guards. So you do not have to be, in following that tradition, you do not have to be a servant leader or a member of the Morning Star Methodist Church. But we make this table open for all, and the reason we do that is because Christ did it for all. And so we're going to invite you now to join us in what we call Confession and Pardon. Confession and pardon is kind of like washing your hands before a meal in, in your home at a restaurant. Uh, we wash our hands. Well, when we gather for the Lord's Supper, we do confession and pardon for a washing of the heart. And we're reminded about the importance of what we do. So join me now in the reading of the liturgy for confession and pardon with the part that's in the bold print. O holy and merciful God, we confess that we have not always taken upon ourselves the yoke of obedience nor been willing to seek and to do your perfect will. We have not loved you with all our heart and mind and soul and strength, neither have we loved our neighbors as ourselves. You have called to us in the need of our sisters and brothers, and we have passed unheeding on our way. In the pride of our hearts and our unwillingness to repent, we have turned away from the cross of Christ and have grieved your Holy Spirit. Friends, this is the message that we have heard from God and proclaimed to you, that God is the light, and in God there is no darkness at all. If we walk in the light, as God is in the light, we have community with one another, and the blood of Jesus the Son cleanses us from all sin. May Almighty God, who calls light to shine out of the darkness, shine in our hearts, cleansing us from all our sins, and restoring to us the light of the knowledge of God's glory in the face of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Holy One, you speak to us in silence, yet all languages interpret you. Because you call us into this community, we are able to become a gift to one another. We pray for your Holy Spirit to descend upon us and upon these gifts of bread and juice, that in sharing them we may discern your presence, which becomes our life. We thank you for your anointed one, King Jesus, who through his life, crucifixion, death, and resurrection, lived fully the promise of redemptive wholeness that is available to all who would obey your creating will, and who now lives evermore to make intercession for us. We celebrate his gifts, and we rejoice in your presence, loving God, now and always. We do not presume to come to this, your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table. But you are the same Lord whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, 
So to eat this bread to remind us of the brokenness of your dear Son, Jesus Christ. And to drink this juice that symbolizes his blood spilt on Calvary for us. That our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and sacrifice. And our souls washed through his most precious and redeeming blood. And that we may dwell in him and he in us. Through him, with him, and in him. In the power of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor be to you, O God, now and forever. Amen. Well, friends, now that we've been able to experience the confession and pardon together, we're going to take part in the Lord's Supper. And if you have one of the cups that we provide here, uh, you can pick them up here on campus for, their, for home use. Uh, or if you don't have one of these, you can just use crackers and, and grape juice that you may have at home. These are sealed. On one side, you have the wafer that for us will represent the body of Christ. And on the other side, you have the seal for the grape juice, which today will represent the blood of Christ for us. So on the night he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take and eat. So we do this today to remember the brokenness of Christ's body for all of us. The body of Christ broken for us. And then Jesus took the cup and he said, This is the cup of a new covenant that I make with you. Take and drink this. For this represents my blood, which will be shed for you. So friends, this is the blood of Christ, which is shed for us. Thanks be to God for his unspeakable gift. A prayer of gratitude. Eternal God, we thank you for the bread of life and the cup of salvation we have tasted at your table. As we have received, so may we freely give to others becoming the light and doorway of your love. Amen.
Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me There's no wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down Coming after me There's no shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Please join me for our closing prayer. Creator God, we know that our feelings are often unreliable. We do not desire to build our lives on our feelings, but on your truth found in your word. We want you to be the Lord of our emotions. We want to be filled with your Holy Spirit. Forgive us when we forget your desire for us. Forgive us when we put aside your vision. Remind us of your holy love and spirit that is planted within us. May we all learn to put your words in our mouths and to speak your word of truth. Holy God, please renew our communion with your church throughout the world and strengthen it in every nation and among every people to witness faithfully in your name. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord will be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord will be praised. Well, friends, thanks for joining us today for our Labor Day weekend online worship experience. I look forward to worshiping with you again next weekend when we start a brand new series, Questions We're Afraid to Ask. If you made a decision today or, or, to follow Jesus or if you want to learn more about Christ, I'd love to have that conversation with you. You can 
Call me here at the church office at 205-678-2572 or send an email to me at pastor at mstarchelsea.com and I'll be sure to reach out to you. Thank you so much for your time today and for joining us for the Lord's Supper here with the online community of faith. Blessings on you, friends.